This is MathCamp 321, and this is a lesson on integration by substitution. What to do when you're off by some constant. And this is a continuation of my first series on integration by substitution using just very basic techniques. These are going to get a little bit more complicated. So in number 7, our integrand is 5x plus 7 to the 20th. And if I were to let u equal 5x plus 7, then the derivative of that would be just 5. But there's no 5 in our problem. So we're off by some constant, namely 5 in this case. So let's see how to proceed when something like this happens. Let's start by letting u equal 5x plus 7. Taking the derivative of this equation with respect to x, I get du dx equals 5. Cross multiplying, I get du equals 5 dx. But our problem ends with a dx. It does not end with a 5 dx. So we're going to do one more step in our substitution. And we're going to divide both sides by 5, getting us 1 fifth du equals dx. I'm going to put these four components in a box. And now I'm ready to rewrite our initially stated problem as a problem exclusively in the variable u. So instead of 5x plus 7 to the 20th, I'm going to write u to the 20th. And instead of dx, I've got to replace that with 1 fifth du. Now because 1 fifth is a constant, I can write that out in front, and I'll put the du at the end. So I'll start by rewriting that 1 fifth. I'll leave some space. The power of 20 goes to a 21, and the reciprocal of 21 is 1 over 21. And then we need to remember to put our plus c. Now cleaning this up, we end up getting 1 over 105, u to the 21st plus c. And then we back substitute in for u. And u is 5x plus 7. So here's our final answer. Let's look at another example. In problem number 9, I'm considering u to be 3x squared plus 1. Its derivative would be 6x. Now we have an x present at the beginning, but it's not a 6x, so we're off by some constant, namely 6. So I'm going to go ahead and let u equal 3x squared plus 1, which means that du dx would equal 6x, du would equal 6x dx, and that 1 sixth du would equal x dx. I'm going to take these four components and put them in a box. And I'm going to rewrite the problem with that x that's in the front in the back. So I'm going to start with cosine of 3x squared plus 1. I'm going to take the x that was in the front and write it here. And then it concludes with a dx. Now the x dx at the end is just like this x dx at the bottom of the box. So I'm going to rewrite this as the antiderivative of the cosine of u. And then this x dx is really 1 sixth which I'll write in front, du. Now the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So we have 1 sixth sine u plus c. And I'll finish by back substituting in for u. And I think we have one more example of integration by substitution when you're off by some constant. So one more example. Well, I lied. There's actually two more examples. There's this one and one more. So in this problem, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal 3x. Therefore, du dx will equal 3, and du will equal 3 dx. Now you'll notice our originally stated problem doesn't have a 3 floating around. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3, getting me 1 third du equals dx. And I'll put these four facts in a box. Now I'm going to rewrite the originally stated problem exclusively in terms of u. We're going to end up getting secant squared u, and then this dx at the end is the same as one-third du. And the one-third, which is a constant, can be written out in front. Now the question becomes, what is the antiderivative of secant squared? And you may recall that that's tangent u. I'll back substitute in for u, and we end up with one-third the tangent of 3x plus c. 
And now we'll move to our fourth example of integration by substitution when you're off by some constant. So in this example number 12, they actually give us a hint and they tell us what we should allow u to be. And they're telling us that u should be tangent of x over 3 or tangent of 1 third x. Now when we take the derivative of this expression with respect to x, it's going to require the chain rule. So the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of something times the derivative of that something. So du dx is going to equal secant squared 1 third x and then we chain the argument the derivative of 1 third x is going to be 1 third. Cross multiplying, that dx that's on the bottom here is going to move to the top over there. Now, you'll notice this one-third right here. We don't have a one-third floating around in our originally stated problem. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides through by 3. I'm going to take all of these facts and place them in a box. I'm going to take note of the fact that our originally stated problem ends with secant squared of x over 3 dx and the bottom of the box ends with secant squared x over 3 dx so we'll be able to make an easy substitution right there so let's take our original problem and rewrite it exclusively in terms of u so tan of x over 3 or 1 third x the tan of 1 third x is the same as just u and then all of these things that I underlined in green is the same as 3 du so I'll take the 3 and I'll put it on the outside and then we have a du here. So what seemingly seemed very complicated in the beginning ended up being a pretty basic integral. So I'm going to write down the 3, leave some space, raise the power from 1 to 2, multiply by the reciprocal which would be a half, and not forget to put plus c. Combining this I get 3 halves u squared plus c and then I'll finish by back substituting in for u. Now, because u is a trig function, let's remember what happens when we square a trig function, where we actually write that power of 2. If I want to square this right here, traditionally when you square a trig function, you put the power of 2 right here. So I'm going to write tangent squared x over 3 plus c. So here were four examples of integration by substitution where our u substitution led us to something in which we were off by some constant. And when you're off by some constant, it's really not a big deal to fix the problem.